Alright, let's all stand. Sing your song books to page 169. We will sing, Come Thou Fount. Amen. Page 169. All stand and stretch. And get our blood flowing for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Page 169. Here we go. Come thy fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, some by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come. And I know by thy good pleasure, safely thou arrive at home. Jesus saw me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interpose his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, by my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Amen. Amen. There's so much meaning to that song. Amen. A lot of it. We will go to page 224. We'll sing, there should be showers of blessing. Amen. Page 224, <laughs> there should be showers of blessing. Here we go. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing, sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy just round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy just round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Ground to us now are refreshing, come on now, honor thy word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy just round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, oh that to thee they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now is on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy just round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Yeah, he's up here messing all my stuff up. <laughs> all righty. Well, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for tonight. What a blessing it is. Lord, looking forward to this Saturday and uh, this Sunday, Youth Rally and Western Roundup. 
God, I just pray that you help us, Lord, to be faithful to the to the that ministry. Lord, help us to be here. Lord, I pray we'll bring food. I help remind us of this. Lord, remind us of uh, just being a servant unto the Lord and uh, serving people. God, I pray that we just have a great time. But now, tonight, Lord, we need to hear from heaven. Need to hear from the throne room, Lord. Can't do anything without you. Please bless in a mighty and glorious way tonight. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. We got all our prayer requests in. Do pray for Miss Christie and her son I, I, Isaac for their travel up to Flagstaff. So she said, uh, Preacher, we'll be in a church up there while we're up there. But they wanted to see the Grand Canyon. so But they'll be back for Sunday service, they said. So praise the Lord. So pray for her. They, <laughs> I think there was unexpected weather there because they had, they had uh, some uh, issues on the highways up there. So over 4,000 feet, and it was pretty treacherous from what I understand. So they had a lot of snow up there. So pray for I know Arizona has snow. Praise the Lord for that. So but uh, there was something else I'm going to tell you too. Do pray for Brother Taylor, his health. Put him on your prayer list. For He's over at Brother Ware's right now. He'll be here, I think, tomorrow. He'll be here a couple days before he preaches Wednesday. But uh, he can't do much physical stuff, so pray for him. God will heal him totally from all that mess. And so, you know, you, you know, you get older, your body doesn't... Your body is different when it's older than when it was a younger. <laughs> so I was telling the kids, the boys, I said, uh, I was playing baseball, and I was a catcher. And uh, I made a mistake. I stuck my hand out one time before the batter swung the bat. <laughs> it's a, it's, 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 actually, it's a common mistake for catchers to do that because they the ball's coming in, you know, so they misjudge it. So I stuck my hand out there, and the the batter uh, hit my mitt for a home run. <laughs> I'm not joking. Took my hand almost off my my uh, arm, and it, I mean I got hurt bad. And so they said, well, we can't take you out of the game because you, we got to leave you in the game. So let's put you in another position. So they said, let's make you center fielder. So I got I went out to center field and they brought in a new catcher. Cause see, you want to keep the batty the batters if you can keep them. You know, when you take them out of the game, you can't bring them back in. When you know they're they're out, you have to just switch them positions, keep them on the field, so you can bring them back in to catch if you want to do or whatever. So this is their mentality. So uh, the the guy hits the ball out to me. Now I'm way out to the fence, <laughs> and the guy hits the ball out to center field, but it looks like it's gonna drop right in front of me. And I ran as hard as I could and dove for the ball and caught it. And my coach says, you are now center fielder. <laughs> what I mean by all this, I said that for this, not to brag on Brother Mike. But Brother Mike used to be able to run. <laughs> Brother Mike can't run anymore. I get tired watching other people run. I, I watch the Olympics, and I get worn out. <laughs> they should have a, a gold medal for getting worn out watching the Olympics, amen. <laughs> I said, they're going, that's a lot of work. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, I just think about when I wrestled, that was the, one of the hardest sports ever, ever. Because you used almost every muscle and every bit of strength you have in six minutes. And uh, boxing has nothing on wrestling. Boxing has nothing on it. So, yeah, and I just I watch guys wrestle. It wears me out watching them. So, and I used to be so physical. Now I'm barely breathing. <laughs> My wife puts mirrors in front of my face while I'm sleeping to make sure I'm still breathing, you know. <laughs> hey, man, she watched to see if the blankets go up and down. <laughs> I do that with the kids, you know that, right? I go in, I check on them before I go to bed, and I'll look, and I'll see if the blankets are going up and down, because I may have to rescue them. <laughs> huh? You never know. So, hey, I have a couple friends who's who went into their kid's bedroom and found them dead, and that, that to me, would be a horrible thing to find horrible and their little little ones uh passed away on them while they were sleeping uh that'd be that'd be horrible so that's why i I, lo I watch so i figure my wife's watching is he still breathing he's an old guy <laughs> 
By the way, when you get older, you don't breathe as deep either. Ask anybody who's older. It's shallow breathing. That's not deep breathing like it was when you're younger. So why are you saying all this? Because you're getting older. You know, one day you're going to quit breathing in this life. Yep. And if you're not saved, you might want to get saved because you don't know when your last breath is going to be. Right. See, brother, brother Taylor didn't know two months ago that he was going to be in the condition he's in now. Right. Huh? Now he's breathing by an oxygen machine. He says he can take that oxygen machine off, but his, his oxygen level is all over the place then. And when he puts it back on, it gets stabilized. Say, I don't know if he's going to preach with it on or not. And I don't know how long he's going to be able to preach. But we pray for him that God give him the strength to preach. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and your body gets older. I mean, Brother Taylor, I don't know how many, time, how many years he's been preaching for us. I don't know. Anybody know? Yeah, maybe eight years. So, and he sure was in a whole lot better health <laughs> then than he is now today. So, just pray for him. So, you know, people do pass on, even preachers. Yeah. And they, they sometimes they just have to give up preaching because they just can't do it. Right. So pray for him that it doesn't be that way for him. Because I know he likes preaching. Right. So most preachers do. Amen. There are the few preachers who don't like preaching. <laughs> but they do it anyway because God called them to do it. They're, you know, they're a Jonah. <laughs> Seriously. Miss Faith says, pray for the church kid's salvation. Mrs. Porter, Mrs. Tenney, Mrs. Marvin, Mrs. Hernandez, their health. For Jacob and, uh, and uh, Diamond to be adopted, amen. For Stella and Pete, their health and salvation. For Macy, Lauren, Becca, Sarah, Michaela, their pregnancies. Leroy Sr., his health and spiritual and protection. And for Faith, unspoken request, her wrist, she got the assist on her wrist, please pray for that. And for Francisco Fazio, he needs to get saved. Amen. Amen. Karen says, pray for her bio family who need to get saved. For her to love the Lord their God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. For her to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Miss Chow, Miss Chow is now an American citizen. She passed her test today and got and became a, uh, got sworn in as an American citizen today. So she came out the door and I go, here she comes, Miss Mary. <laughs> I did sing that. You can ask her. I did sing that. <laughs> She's an American now. Praise the Lord. I asked her. I said, did you ever think you'd be you'd be said to you that you'd be an American? So coming from Viet Mayonnaise. That's what I call a Viet mayonnaise. <laughs> hey, man. Got to give her a hard time. Miss Chow is so fun to give a hard time to. Because she gets that nice smile on her face. And <laughs> so praise the Lord. She's an American citizen now. She came the right way. She didn't come across the border because Biden says, come on over and destroy our country. She came the right way and got her, her citizenship properly. Amen. So that's a blessing. Some of us may not be able to pass the citizenship test. <laughs> Seriously. Americans. So, yeah. There's a lot of things you got to learn. History, you know, stuff like that. You know, in, in, the, in the school, in high school, you couldn't graduate high school unless you knew uh, uh, George Washington's farewell address by heart. Mm -hmm. He talks about God eight times in his farewell address. Huh? You you had to know it. Uh, you had to know your Constitution and Declaration of Independence. Yeah, I know. But they don't teach all that anymore. Because what they're doing is they've been whittling down patriotism for a long time. See. And uh, this goes way back to 1940, by the way, when they started taking all this stuff out. So, so praise the Lord. But... You ought to get to know that kind of stuff. They have free courses online for you to learn it. Hillsdale College. Free. And you can learn about the Constitution and Declaration of Independence. It's free. And you get on there and they'll teach you all about it. They, they've been doing that. Hillsdale College, I didn't know how old it was, but it's like 1850. It's been around. Hmm? 
It's been around a long time. And that was been their whole objective was to teach people uh, the, the reason America's around and the purpose for America. So praise the Lord. Obviously, Joseph Biden never took that course because <laughs> he doesn't know what a constitution is. Neither does Pelosi or Schumer. I don't think I don't think they're Americans anyway. I think they're communists. I think they're communists put in place exactly where they were supposed to be planted by the Communist Party. So I have no use for any of them. No use for any of them. So I'm just amazed how long they've lived. <laughs> but they have. But so Miss Chow, pray for her health also. Pray for our neighbors to be saved. Uh, praise God for Leah, for her being saved. And Amen. pray her she continue, she continues to seek the truth. Pray for God's will in her life. Uh, pray for Karen's great-grandparents up in Alaska. And uh, pray for her bio-parents, her bio-grandpa and uncle. And for physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional health. Six unspoken requests for Karen. God's will and those. <sighs> My eyesight must be getting worse. For the, those young ones that are babes in Christ to grow. Joseph Biden and uh, Kamala Harris to get saved. And uh, we're, we're hoping for a 2021 adoption for both Jacob and, and, and uh, Abigail. That's what we're going to name her, Abigail. Abigail Joy. Abigail's a Bible name. Abigail was a, a virtuous woman. She actually protected her family. David was going to kill the whole family. And because of her, she changed the king's mind. Hmm? And uh, Abigail's a good name. She ended up becoming one of David's wives. Pray for America, God's will in it. Sure is a different America. The Holy Spirit to have free reign during the youth rally and Western Roundup. For continual revival, submission to the Holy Spirit, and unity in each one's individual heart. That Lookout Mountain Baptist Church. Pray for Karen. Never to, never to take. That's a K. Take anything, no matter how small, for granted. Amen. By the way, we do take things for granted, even small things. I mean, God does things for us, and we don't even look upon him and say, give him credit for it. Huh? I always like to look for God in everything we do Amen. that happens in my life. Right. That we would praise God for all things, it says. Amen. Robert Nicktine. For wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, total surrender to God. You were stuttering at this one next sentence? Okay. <laughs> to be real to God <laughs> and men. He got toot, 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 toot. <laughs> I, was just, I just figured he was stuttering and he was writing down his stutter. Right? <laughs> it's so funny what you can see in people's prayer requests sometimes. Oh, my God. <laughs> to fear God and eschew evil. Amen. That's a Job thing. Amen. Or oh, it's actually a, a godly man thing. For separation, holiness, and satisfaction. Sanctification, I'm sorry. By the way, the Bible tells us, uh, thinking about satisfaction, you're supposed to be content in all things. And then also adoption again for Jacob and, and Diamond. Strength to stand and discretion. He's also got two unspoken requests. Amen. Paul Davis, for God to prepare him to do his will in his life. I heard you got a job, brother. Is this true? You're driving, huh? Amen. Praise the Lord. You you deliver stuff or something. Yeah. I heard a little bit about it, but no one ever tells me. You know, especially the guy who got the job. I don't. Know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amen. So I got a job. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, pray for uh, Paul for soul winning. And he wants to thank God for his life and for saving him, help him to learn and grow in all the ways of the as a servant of God. He says, I thank, thank you for this, my Lord. Amen. To pray for Pastor Mike, double honor. Ooh, amen. amen. Yeah. 
and double honor and health too. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think I had some relapse. So I told my my kids that I said I think I'm relapsing. For not, I'm, not, I'm not addicted to drugs or anything. That's not what I'm relapsing. <laughs> Just to make that clear, <laughs> it's a uh, it's uh, the sickness. It, some of the symptoms come back. So I don't know what it is. For uh, God to lift up the name of, for Him to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, for help to get rid of the pests. I'm staying around, brother. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, not that pest. <laughs> and he wants to thank God for his job he got and ask for wisdom and knowledge and understanding and the Lord to, and to, uh, to love him and pray for the, la uh, the last to get saved, the lost to get saved, I'm sorry, the lost to get saved. Amen. There's a lot of them out there nowadays. Whew, a lot of them. So a lot that don't want to hear it either. Kevin says, pray to love Jesus most for John, Michael, and Thomas. Uh, those are co-workers? The co that's three people, John, Michael, and Thomas? Or is that John? John One name, okay. That's why I asked. I didn't know. He, John, Michael, and Thomas, salvation. He got, a, he got asked uh, today, was it today? He asked, uh, one guy asked him if he was a Catholic or a Christian. He told him he was a Christian and was able to talk to him, preach to him about the Jesus, amen, yeah. about right. the Lord. And so, uh, and they they asked him. He didn't. He didn't bring it up. So that's yeah. a good. That's a good thing, guys. Curious. So, and then two unspoken for Kevin. Sound mind and understanding in his heart, and for his sister Samantha and Exxon, his dad to get saved. Amen. For James, the third, but he thinks he's the fourth. Because he's kind of confused. Maybe that's why he didn't answer when you call him Baby James. He said he's going to change his name to Mike. And I said, oh, that's a good name. But we're going to call you Baby Mike then. <laughs> that's an ain't changing. We ain't changing Baby. <laughs> no, he called him Baby James. Baby James. <laughs> I got two twin sisters. One was called Little One and Biggie. One was bigger than the other one. They were not. They were fraternal twins. Not identical, and one one's now like five foot seven or something, and the other one's like five foot. One's got black hair, one's got blonde hair, kind of a thing. <laughs> they're twins, and people say these are twins, and they go, "No, they're not." Yes, they are. <laughs> and but we called one little one and Biggie. I got a sister who was bigger than she was big, but they called her Tiny. <laughs> and everybody would go, "Why is her name Tiny?" Because she used to be tiny at one time. <laughs> So she is. She's she's lost all that weight, and she's uh, uh, you know, put off that weight now. So she could be called tiny again, but but so we call him Baby James. All that to say, you call him Baby James. <laughs> Here, Baby James, take this hacksaw and cut this pipe. <laughs> uh, old James says, pray for Trump to take back the White House, Amen, and for the left to get right, and for youth rally and Western Roundup. And for his brother and sister to move here. <laughs> Is this a third person thing for James the third to get right? Amen. <laughs> for America to get right. For the adoption for for uh, Jacob and Diamond. And he says, thank God for the work done today. We'll be doing some more work tomorrow. Amen. Kevin's been uh, trimming all those trees out there. He's doing a good job. You can see the sign again. <laughs> You're pulling, hey, there is a church here. There's a sign. <laughs> Doris says, praise Jesus, I'm saved. And thank you, Jesus, for your love and mercy you have for her. Please pray for her family to see a need for Jesus Christ. Amen. So all her kids, her, for, for Eric. He's thinking about that. Hmm. Miss Irene says to follow God's will for my life. Now, Miss Irene, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a, a note of understanding here. Because in Christianity, this isn't supposed to be used, but you use it on your prayer list. <laughs> this is just to help you. I, had to, I did it with our secretary when I was with the ranch because she used to use the same thing. MS is a New Age thing. Ms., that's New Age. 
that's also dealing with the occult. And it's, uh, it's basically saying, uh, what? I know, I'm looking at your face like, what? No, MRS is for, for the adult. You've been married. You're still considered Mrs. It doesn't matter. MISS is for an unmarried person, and MS is, comes from the New Age movement, the Women's Equal Rights Amendment, and the Live Movement, which is all run by the devil. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where it started. You, you're not old enough to probably understand. I, I remember when it started. I remember when it started. Uh, you go online and look up new uh, look up uh, um, Equal Rights Amendment back in the 60s and 70s, the Women's Live Movement. All that stuff is dealing with uh, women to be exalted above men and to take and take a, exert authority over men. That's what it was all about. That's what that MS is all about. See, Ms. Why? Well, what year? Just like Wikipedia. You look at Wikipedia, they got today's definitions. You got to go to an older dictionary. Like, here, here, look it, look it up. Look, get, get, let me give you this information, Miss Irene. 1828. See if Ms. is in there. You're not going to find it. 1828? <laughs> All you do is look it up online. You can you download the app. Huh? Oh, well, get yourself a physical copy. What? Yeah, every time. Yeah, I know. You can get it online. I got it, I got it on my phone. I just hit, hit my 1828 dictionary. Boom, it's right there. Yeah. You won't find it in there, because it never it never was a word until the new new age movement, and the women's lib movement. That's well, that's because you got to find out what it means. What does M I S S stand for? What does M R S stand for? Okay, M R. What does M R period stand for? Why did they put a period after it? <laughs> because it's a short for another word. Like M R period is Mister. So you got to look up Mister. Okay. Mistress, or 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 uh, it would be. No, uh, uh, let me think of what the other word is they use for it. Mm, I'm trying. No, no, there's another word for it. I can't remember it right offhand. I just always use Mrs. <laughs> it's a. It's not MRS degree. That's what they call it nowadays. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the word. But uh, no, you look this up. The, the, my main concern is the MS, okay? And the thing is, because I don't want you to be led astray that that's okay. Because, see, what it does, it leaves the connotation. When you put that on paperwork, people, well, if you, if you ever do, you do on here, okay? So people, when they read that, they're going to say, oh, she's into, she's into women's lib, new age. And that's what, that's gonna, that's what people are going to think. So you said you said point things out if it's, if, if you need help on it, <laughs> but you, you can put sis s i s sis Irene sister. There you go. That's probably better anyway. Well, you can put sister Irene, sis Irene. But uh, just to help you out, because I remember when that came out, and I was saying, what do you, you know what they wanted to do? They took the R off of uh, Mrs. Say. And they're trying. They're trying to shorten it. They're, it's it's usurping the authority of men, and uh, and it takes it takes the authority away from God, because when women have usurped the authority in the family, over the man, they've taken the authority away from God. They're not. They think they're taking it away from the man. They're actually they're actually taking away from God, because God said this is supposed to be the chain of authority in the home. And then when you the women decide to exalt themselves above the man as a leader and authority in the home, then you're just, you're taking everything out of context of the scriptures. Now you're making, the Bible says when you do that, you blaspheme God's word. That's what it says. And uh, so you want to be careful. That's in uh, 1 Timothy. You don't want to do that. And uh, you blaspheme God's word. You don't want to blaspheme God's word. I remember I showed that to someone who was in our church who was doing that all the time to her husband. And when she saw that, she almost cried. I mean, well, she did start crying. 
She almost, she almost fell out of her chair. I said, you've been blaspheming God's word the whole time. She said, because you want to rule your husband. Huh? You, you, I mean, she would tell me, he's an idiot. He don't know what he's talking about. And I'm saying, man, I said, if you think that way, you shouldn't be telling anybody anyway. You know, that should be something between you and him. And you guys work this out. But don't go around telling everybody. She didn't just tell me. She would go around and tell bad things about her husband to people. I'm like, stop it. And I actually said that. Stop it. And then she wondered why her husband, in retaliation, would treat her the way he did. And then the, both of them were doing it in public. And I'm sitting there going, man, me and my wife have never done that. Now, we joke around a lot. You know, we'll joke around and tease each other. We don't do that. We, there's no way. If I have a disagreement with my wife, you're not knowing about it. So, <laughs> so, and if she has a disagreement with me, you're not knowing about it either. So, but uh, the women's, I remember when women's lived in the ERA movement, it came out. I was just, I was in college and I was like, are you kidding me? And I started seeing the change in people immediately. Mm. Now look what we have. Right. No, seriously, look what we have. And it st you can stem it back to that. Right. I mean, when they brag that they got more women in the House of Representatives than ever in history, what's that to brag about? I want to know, is there good lawmakers in the House of Representatives? Yeah. I don't want to, I don't care. Hey, look, if you got a horrible man and a good woman could replace him, I'd, I'd rather have that. <laughs> but don't brag because there's women more than men now in the House of Representatives. That's not, that's not something to brag about. But that's what they did. And then now look at, look at the people who come out of the House of Representatives, like AOC and Pelosi and Feinstein and those guys. I mean, what a mess. And uh, they all act like socialist communists. So, but, you know, that's what, that's what the ERA movement was about. Now, check this out. The ERA movement was about destroying the family. Because when the family gets destroyed, socialism can take over. Say, hey, Amen. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad you're here tonight? Amen. All that because you put MS on there. What do you think you do? No, but that's fine. That's fine. You know, and I seen you had written it down before, but I, I wanted everybody to know, I know. That what it was about. Yes. Oh, the MS. Yeah, yeah. Well, they already knew, so they probably looked at you like, <laughs> because we've already talked about it. So, no, 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 you're right. Well, now you know. Well, now you know. Now you know. So, but, and, and I'm not trying to be mean or anything like that. I'm just trying to help you out. I, I told this to Miss Trudy. She was our secretary at the ranch, and I told her this. She had no idea either. And she was a good Christian woman. She had no idea. Because that's what, this is what they've been taught. Put MS on there. You know. And uh, I was glad my mom didn't fall for that. <laughs> I had some sisters did. But I didn't have my, my mom didn't fall for it. <laughs> Amen. Of course, she was older, old school. You know. The 20s. She come through the depression. <laughs> so. Amen. Well, let's see here. For Miss Irene. Miss. Irene. Sister, Sister Irene. <laughs> Sister Irene. To follow God's will for her life. Look at that. The first question. Look at God already gave you some answers. I mean, praise the Lord. To have a burden for souls. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. In church unity. And two unspoken. By the way, you're not the only Christian lady that I've met that's used the MS on their name. Uh, you know, it's really bad. See, Miss Miss uh, Irene, Wait, I two unspoken. No, on the side. The Psalms one nineteen one sixty five. Great peace I wish they love the law, nothing shall offend them. Hey, I I had a, I had a, I had a I had a, I had a, a a preacher I know, and his wife his wife it couldn't tell that she was a woman. And she was independent. He was independent Baptist, and you couldn't tell she he was she was a woman. She had her hair cut like mine, and she wore. She said there was a skirt, but it looked like like shorts. No joke, they looked like shorts. I mean, my wife and I both saw her, and we said, "What's she wearing those shorts for?" 
So that tells me something about the style. Okay. They were shorts. But she would wear these things and and I'm like, well, what are you trying to prove with your, your husband's a pastor of a big church. <laughs> what are you trying to prove? I mean, her hair, this, see, a woman having hair like mine is wrong. Straight up. I'm going to just tell you, it's wrong. Because the Bible says this is your glory, your hair. So the Bible says. And short hair. And that, you know what? And, here, and here's what most women fall into. And I'm going to help you out, especially you older ladies. Just because you get your hair cut short, your excuse should not be. It's easier to keep. A lot of women do that. It's easier to keep. So I cut it short. I'm sorry. God didn't say that was a prerequisite for cutting your hair. Your hair was always to be long. Man was supposed to have short hair. The Bible just says a man shouldn't have long hair. So it doesn't even nature teach you it's wrong for man to have long hair? Hmm? And the Bible says a woman should have long hair because it's her glory. It's her covering on her head. See, they, a lot of people, they think they've got to have the hat on or the veil or whatever. They think that's what he's talking about. That is not what he's talking about. If you read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, you'll see that he's talking about the hair of a woman. I preach this. And we, when I first came here, and a lot of the women had short hair. They started growing their hair long. They saw the, they saw the truth. And uh, because I saw a lot of women with hair, I, I was feeling bad. I need to get a haircut because it was still longer than the women. <laughs> and so I preached on that. And uh, some of the ladies, they got, well, most of them got their hair. They grew their hair longer. In fact, they said they, they never even heard of that before. Never heard about it. See, just like you never heard of MS, they never heard about growing their hair long. There's a church that's not far from here, and I, I could point and tell you if my finger stopped oh, over there. And uh, they believe that a woman should have short hair. They think that women with long hair are the harlots. This is Independent Baptist Church. I'm sitting there, really? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I said, where are you getting that in the scripture? That's how perverted preaching is getting. No, no, uh, no. No, I tell people, I don't want to kiss my wife who's got shorter hair than me. I don't want her to have more facial hair either. <laughs> And I don't want to have more muscles in me. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. I better get on with the prayer request. I get on preaching. Amen. <laughs> By the way, I believe these things ever since I got saved. The Lord just opened my eyes to it. And I was around. Look, at I grew up in the Seattle Tacoma area. And they're liberal, liberal, liberal in that, in that state and in that area. Way before this world, is be, this country has become liberal as they are now. We, they were way ahead of everybody. I mean, homosexual and so, lesbianism and all that was on the rise and was open and everybody knew. And, you know, this is back in the 60s and 70s. Huh? And for women, women had the short hair, guys had the long hair. It was totally backwards. Men wearing clothes that looked like they belong on women. <laughs> That's back in the 60s and 70s. Man, I went to school with a guy, wore, guy wearing a dress to school. In the 70s, mid-70s. Huh? I wore the earrings. <laughs> we were crazy up there. We were way ahead of our time, so to say, in the liberal side of things, in the wickedness. That's because it is demonic up there. It's wicked. I'd say many of people live up there are, are demon-possessed. I'm just telling you. I see some of the ways they act and the things they think and, and how they respond to things. Go ahead and mention Jesus Christ one time to someone up there. You usually get a you usually get a vile answer. So they're not overly friendly to Christians. Miss Cecilia. Where is Miss there she is? Uh pray for her family in New Mexico. Come back to God. Amen. Amen. For both her grandmas, her health and spiritual. For Sharon to come to church, amen. Tell her to come on to the youth rally in Western Roundup, amen. Three unspoken requests for Miss Cecilia. And God to work on Vincent's heart. To read her Bible and pray without ceasing to be burdened by lost souls. To have a lot of people at the youth rally in Western Roundup, yes. You know, uh, let's put it this way. Let me give you some insight. If we do, because I've had some people calling me and say they're going to be here. Sure, one to two churches that I didn't invite, and then uh, some other people. And I don't know if they belong to a church or not. They wouldn't tell me. 
or you know if they they they're bringing to church or not they wouldn't tell me but the thing is if we get filled out here we let our visitors have the seats and we would either stand or step out so that they could be in here okay i mean that's just we're serving them it's a, it's a, it's an event that we have a service we have for them so they can uh, come and and uh, and learn and mainly the kids first we want the kids in here and uh, if uh, it gets packed out with it, visitors and stuff, and then uh, our kids will be next to come in here because we want them to hear the preaching and stuff and get involved. And uh, But just pray about it. And we got to make sure we got enough chairs we can bring in here if we have to because we may have to fill that area. And I don't know. I have no idea how many is coming. So two years ago, I didn't have any idea how many is coming. And we had a big crowd. And then last year, we had a small crowd. But that was probably that's because of the pandemic, because it came about the same time we had our Western Roundup. So, so pray for what does it say? Pray for those that are come to the Western Roundup. If there's lost souls that they get saved, and uh, and praise the Lord, Miss Cecilia says she's here. Amen. Brother Dave says pray for a need for employees at work. Amen. Need 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 for people to help him in his department there. Pray for God's will that he works to be able to work closer to home. Amen. Miss Brienne, or Miss Grissom says, pray for Brienne Bethany, unspoken request. How's that going? I hadn't, heard. hadn't heard anything. Where's my water? I didn't get a water. Really? It's good. There is no bottle there. Oh, Ronnie pushed it to the back with his books. It's all Ronnie's, all Ronnie's fault. Way to go hiding my drink so you can get it later. <laughs> Amen. So we'll pray for Be Brianne Bethany, the serious uh, request. And then pray for Jean, strength and wisdom and decisions she's got to make. Uh, Dr. Joyner, her husband, his health. How's he doing? Not good. Two unspoken requests for Mrs. Grissom. Pray for her lost family that gets saved. And continue to pray for Mrs. Marvin, her health. Amen. Miss Lisa says, please pray. Keep in prayer for her health. Amen. And uh, just continue to pray for her. And then Miss Liz says, pray for her bio family. They need to get saved. And pray for Miss Liz. Amen. I think that's it. And, uh, and I didn't mean to pick on Miss Irene. That wasn't my own intentions to pick on her. <laughs> but uh, helps out. So praise the Lord. Help you ladies. Really, I like to see ladies live for God. They're so much better when they live for God than when they don't. Because uh, it's funny. Have you ever seen a kid that just rebel against their parents and just mouth off to them in a store or something? And they said, you get it for me now or I'm going to I'm gonna hit you. Or they'll say, I hate you. Now, what do you think about that? You're like, you want to grab that kid by the collar. You want to you wanna show mom how to spank that kid. Huh? But see, when a lady is uh, out, of, out of sorts with the Lord and she's not allowing the... the chain of authority to happen in their life she comes across the same way okay and that's not but by the way i'm not saying miss irene's that way that is not what i'm saying miss irene's not that way and but there's ladies that would have got mad at me because i mentioned it and uh if i mentioned dress they get mad at me if i mention their hair they get mad at me <laughs> huh and i don't i don't mention it hardly at all and uh but they get mad at me and they'll they'll rail on me and that's the same type of person you want to grab them and spank them and say, I need to show your mom how she should have spanked you. <laughs> or your dad, how he should have whooped you. Huh? You need to be whooped. It would start straightening some of that stuff out. So, and many of us that are sitting here right now weren't disciplined right. And we have to, we have to train ourselves, so to say, through the scriptures and the Holy Ghost because we weren't trained to, how to submit. See, you're supposed to, the, your will is supposed to be broken by your parents so that God can have, have control of you. Huh? So he can have access. So he can, you'll do what he tells you to do. 
but we know we I myself personally too was not disciplined right and because of that it was a battle to allow God to have control see but when your child is disciplined and his will gets broken now God's will can take his place say that's what discipline is supposed to be yeah. proper discipline and but this old world keeps fighting out here and and tells your flesh it's okay to do the wrong things and then you get confused and that's why we have this book to help give us direction Amen. and instruction so we can see the difference between what the world's trying to tell us and what God wants us to know Amen. say so that we'll be able to walk rightly and and know where to submit and and when to stand and so forth. And so I'm just telling you, it, it's, it's a battle, and it's always been a battle. See, the battle's just different today than it was 100 years ago or 200 years ago. You know, so it's just a different field. But still, it's a battle. It doesn't, it, it doesn't change. devil hasn't given up. And your flesh still uh, is filled with sin and would like to, like to have uh, authority over you. So, and I'm just telling you, when I was a younger Christian, and my preacher would tell me things. That I would, like, for instance, I'll tell you one thing he told me in the service. I said, well, <laughs> I was an idiot. I said, well, the government owes me a living. <laughs> Man, that was the wrong thing to say to my preacher. <laughs> he says, when did they owe you a living? <laughs> I said, well, they got lots of money. They should give me some. <laughs> he says, they owe you nothing. He says, no one owes you anything. Huh? In fact, you owe them. You get to live in this country under liberty and freedom. You got, you got, you got yourself a job. You ought, to be, you ought to thank your boss for paying your bills. You ought to thank your mom and dad. He went down that line. And I'm sitting there going, boy, I made a mistake. By the way, I learned from that. and I didn't, I didn't get mad at him or anything. I just said, man, you're right. The Holy Ghost was telling me he's right. You know this, right? I owe Jesus Christ everything. Yeah. See? So when he corrected me like that, and I deserved it, by the way, I didn't forget it. Huh? Changed because he did that. Amen? So I didn't say that again. Didn't see the government owing me a living. Didn't see my mom and dad owe me anything. Huh? I didn't see, I didn't see anybody owing me anything. I started to realize I owe everybody something. Everybody who, who helped me in my life, I owe them something. So praise the Lord. I owe my wife things. I, owe, oh, I, I look at it this way. I owe my kids because they've taught me a lot of lessons. So I'm serious. Little Jacob, he's taught me a lot. He's four years old. In his little four-year-old life, he's, uh, he's uh, taught me a lot. I learned a lot about kids. I've learned a lot about faith from him. By the way, he asks me every day now, every day, why do people want to go to heaven? Uh, he says that. Why do people? He, he said, I need to sit down and talk to you. He'll, that's how he starts it out. He'll sit across the table from me and says, okay, why do people want to go to heaven? So he's really concerned about this, you know. And then I'll tell him, and he says, and he says are you going to heaven? Yeah. He says, why? Why did you get saved? Amen. I learn a lot, man. A little soul winner that he is. <laughs> He's practicing on, on the family. He, he looks at his brothers and he says, I know they're lost. <laughs> the <way> they, <laughs> they both stared at me like, mm. <laughs> did you just say that? <laughs> Amen. Miss Cheyenne says, pray for Bob Halstead, her bio family, the kids in her neighborhood to get saved. And she's got, a, uh, she got some unspoken requests from Miss Cheyenne, so pray for those things. Let's go to, let's go to prayer.
smell ready. Let's, let's take him an offering. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Take up this offering, Lord. I pray that you'll get glory from it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to take an offering at the end of the service for Brother Taylor, so don't forget that. The night was so dark, I could not see. The waves were so angry, crashing over me. With nowhere to turn, no way of escape, I bowed on my knees. And these words I prayed. Uh... 
so he can help you. Help, Lord, I'm carrying a load. My shoulders are weak, and I'm hurting so. I need help from above, the touch of your love. Oh, hear my plea, and Lord, help me. I need help from above, the touch of your love. Oh, hear my plea, and Lord, Lord, help me. Some folks will shout, some testify, some will get stirred up, raise their hands with a smile, good godly worship. We still need today, I love the old time way. Where the preachers still preach and the singers still sing, the clock on the wall does not mean a thing, the old fashioned altar, that's where we pray, I love the old time way, yeah. stood every yep. test, but ah. his power still fits today, <coughs> the old time way. Where the preacher still preach, and the singer still sing, the clock on the wall does not mean a thing, the old fashioned altar, that's where we pray, I love the old time way, yes, I love the old time way. Praise the Lord. Yeah, We're going back to something here. Anybody know what the word uh, theory means? The word theory. Theory. What? Music theory. Does anybody know what theory, the definition of theory is? Some, so something that doesn't have, isn't backed up by facts. <laughs> That's why the theory of evolution. You know what they're teaching in school now, theory means? It's facts. See, and so we're going to have a generation that's going to be raised up believing that, that evolution has backed up facts. See, everything, look, when they start changing words, and they've changed a many a words in our history. And uh, they've changed words, and they don't mean, I mean, like gay. Now you say gay, and what comes to your mind right away? Uh-huh. Homosexual, sodomite, yeah. lesbian, they're gay. Okay? But that's not what the word meant. The original word meant to be happy, joyful, gleeful. Amen. See, they change things. And I'm saying that for this purpose, and this may help Miss Irene, that MS came in in the 60s and 70s. And what they did is they were changing what represented a woman. And, uh, and at first when it came out, it was, it was rebelled against. I'm not using that. But what they did is they knew they taught a new generation to receive it and to see nothing wrong with it. For instance, I'm amazed at how many Christians accept sodomy, homosexuals and lesbians. I'm amazed at how many accept drinking now. 
Why is that? Because, see, the devil, what he did is he taught the next generation. See, me and you would rebel against him. Rah! And Bible says you're to rebel against sin, by the way. Right. Evil. And we rebel against it, but the next generation of little kids like Jacob, if, if he isn't taught contrary-wise, he'll receive it. And he'll accept drinking. He'll accept the sodomite. What's wrong with them? We're supposed to love everybody. You know, that kind of thing. Let, hey, leave them alone and let them do what they want to do. Well, it's none of my business. And that's what they teach them. But it is your business because they're going to influence your children. Look at I was brought up, I was brought up in the, the flower power age and the hippie age and the beatnik age. Some of you guys went to beatnik. A beatnik used to talk about the L7. Anybody know what L7 is? I am not L7. You're L7. Anybody know what L7 is? My kids know. It's square. L7. Seven, L7. Square. Okay? And you're square. And that's what we brought up in. That's early 60s. We were beatnik days. They played the bongos and had the weird haircuts and the funny, wear the sunglasses inside, you know, in the, the, in the dark, <laughs> wear sunglasses. They don't understand. How come I can't see? And they wear, all usually had goatees. Huh? And uh, they played the bongos a lot. <laughs> but the thing is, we were, we, were, we were conditioned to receive that stuff as normal. I was conditioned to receive the music, normal. I was conditioned to receive uh, uh, women, the free sex age. You know, not being married is okay. By the way, I'm amazed at how many people don't know it's not okay to live together and have sex without being married. I learned that when I was talking to a guy one time. He said, something's wrong with what you're talking about. I don't see anything wrong with uh, uh, living with someone and having sex and not being married to them. Well, it's called fornication. Hmm? That's wrong. It's against God. God says it's a sin. God hasn't changed. Man keeps changing. See? And, and with all that being said, you've got to be careful what you're learning. You got to find out where the the sources of, of it is, uh, where it's coming from. See, I, I read a book called Americanism or Communism, and it, back in the early 1900s, around the turn of the century, 1800 to 1900, the communists tried to take over America. They tried to take Bible and prayer out of school, but they found such great contention against them to try to take Bible and prayer out of school. They made they made a decree that we will just chip away at the morality of America and they will give up their Bible and prayer. 1962 and 63, finally they got their way. It only took them 60 years to get their way in it. Americans accepted it, received it. See, they, didn't, they weren't cautious. They weren't guarding their heart. And, 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 and I wasn't saved yet, and, I'm, and then I'm brought up into this mess. And so I'm starting to receive things that aren't right, that I'm being taught in, my, in the government schools, and by others around me, that it's okay. I remember my grandma. She said homosexuality was okay. Wait, she was born in 1903. Where did, where did she get this idea? Because she was brought up in the generation where they thought they were being trained and taught that this stuff was all right. And now we receive it hook, line, and sinker. It used to be an abomination to man. Now it's not an abomination. The person who's abomination is the Christian who preaches against it. We're haters because of it. You got to be cautious of what you learn, what you, take, what you receive into your heart. Because if you receive wrong into your heart, it's going to be hard to get rid of it. A wrong isn't going to want to leave. <laughs> it isn't. It's going to keep showing its ugly face every once in a while when you're trying to fight it. Amen. Try to get rid of it. Huh? <laughs> and by the way, the devil's slick. He knows how to bring it up in your memory. Right, yeah. We're going to dismiss your class now, brother. I, I was waiting. Essie was like this. Essie was like this. Hey, uh, uh, we're, going to, we're going to Ronnie's class. <laughs> Dad, I like it, but I don't want to hear you. No, I'm just... <laughs> She didn't say that. <laughs> Let's open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, you know what the thing is? And I'm, I'm talking to everybody about this. We need to be cautious of what we learn. You know how to tell what you, what's right and what's wrong? Yeah, the Bible. The Bible is going to teach you what's right and what's wrong. 
You're going to say, I believe that all along? That's not, that's against the scriptures. Hmm? I'm just telling you. Let me give you another one I was taught when I was growing up. I was taught this. It's all right for guys to look at pornography. You're an American. You're a man. You should be able to look at that. You want to know why? Because you're a man. Nothing's wrong with that. And that's what I was being taught. Huh? Did I see that stuff? Yes, I did see that stuff. Why? Because that's what I was being taught. And it was normal, they said. Huh? And so when I got saved, that was a battle. Hmm? A fight. Why? Because the flesh didn't want to give it up. Hmm? Then God told me to give it up. I'm just telling you. His world is wicked. He wants to teach you the worst of the worst. You know what? And I think the devil's got, a, got a, something on his mind about it. If they get saved, it's going to be a battle in their salvation, in their, sa in their saved life. And still I'm going to have some kind of inroad on them. Huh? Look, he knows the power of God that men get saved. He saw Paul, who was Saul, get saved. A man who was killing the Christians. Huh? So what did he do? He says, well, we're going to go ahead and lay a foundation. Foundation in his life that's going to be a struggle to get out of. Something that's going to be hard to forsake. But what you need to do, all of us need to do is just humble ourselves before God and just say, God, take this from me now. I'm offering it to you. I'm offering it to you. Take it. I don't want this in my life anymore. Amen. I'm going to tell you, a lot of things were taught me when I was uh, young. A lot of wickedness. I told you I was raised in the Seattle-Tacoma area. Now a wicked place, I'm telling you. And it's not any better today. In fact, it's probably a hundredfold over. Hmm. It's called the sister city of San Francisco. What does that mean? That's right. San Francisco is like a most vile place. It's like the Sodom and Gomorrah of the United States. Mm. I wouldn't want that. Uh, I wouldn't want that uh, pinned on my name that I'm the sister city of San Francisco. Are you kidding me? Mm. Amen. First Corinthians chapter three. Let's stand. Verse thirteen. It says, "Every man's works shall be made manifest." For the day shall declare, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's works or of what sort it is. And then we go to verse 14, and it says this, If any man's works abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Amen. That's what, that is your goal as a Christian. And by the way, I've heard Christians say, Well, you know, if God don't give me a reward, that's all right. You don't really believe that. You want rewards from God. I want God to reward me. First, he's my father. Number two is because he promises it. And, he, and, and number three is his rewards are greater than any man can give you. I mean, it would be a blessing. And the number four is because those rewards you get, you receive, you're going to be able to return them back to him, cast them at his feet. Huh? He'll give you a crown of life. And uh, you can cast it back at his feet and say, Lord, this is for you. See, you're not going to want to be there empty without any rewards to give back to him. And God says right here, if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. You notice that word abide? Our Heavenly Father, help us understand what we'll hear tonight. In a few moments, we'll, we'll get into this, Lord. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. You can be seated. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. That means work that you build over upon, that means, guess what? you got to do something. You can't just be idle. You can't be a couch potato Christian. That means you've got to actually be active doing something. And as an elderly person, like a shut-in, they say, well, I can't do anything. You can pray. Amen. I knew a guy whose mom ended up being a shut-in, 
And what she did, and that's when back when, well, they still have phone books. You know, you can still get a phone book. But she used to take the phone book, and she'd go through the phone book and start at A's and start calling everybody in the phone book and ask them if she can send a track to them that tells them how they can go to heaven. And anybody said yes, she'd mark it, and then she'd write their address down. She'd put a track in an envelope and send it to them. You know what she did? She found a ministry she could do from her home. She couldn't get out to do church, go to church. She couldn't go out to go grocery shopping. She couldn't leave her house for any reason. She had to have people to help her. But she couldn't get on the phone and talk to people. Hmm? Yeah. Elderly people can pray. You can get on your face and pray, spiritually or physically. Most, a lot of elderly people can't get on their, their physical face. They can't get down on their knees. But they can still bow their head and pray. And they can still bow their, bow their heart to the Lord and pray and, and ask God to bless the preachers and churches and missionaries and, and just work that way in, God, in the life of God and in, in the ministry of the Lord and, and in the kingdom of God. Say, Yeah, there's ways you can get rewards. And all that, by the way, I've told you that God gives rewards for prayer. Hmm? Little kid, like Jacob and Diamond, they always ask me to pray with them. And they'll pray. In fact, now it's not, Papa, pray for us. It's, let me pray for us. And they'll grab my hand and they'll start praying. No, it used to be, Lord, bless this food, amen. Now it's, Lord, bless this food, and Lord, uh, take care of Papa, and take care of Mama, and take care of sisters and brothers, take care of our bio family. <laughs> save this person and save that person. That's what they're doing now. Their prayer life is growing. Amen. But I believe God's going to give them a reward for it if they get saved. Amen. And if they die before they come to age accountability, there's a reward for them. But they have a pure heart and an innocent life and a, and a faith that God doesn't want harmed. They believe they can talk to God and God's going to answer. I can guarantee those little ones like that, I believe they're talking to God. And we get on our faces, sometimes we don't believe we're talking to God. Or we say, God's not hearing me. Why wouldn't he hear you? What, do you think his ears are plugged? Well, you've got to go to the doctor and get, a, get a, uh, his ear canal, get, got to get cleaned out so he can hear you? Got to get God some ear, ear, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, uh, what do you call them? Hearing aids for God so he can hear you? No, he hears you. He knows you're talking to him. The problem is not God, it's our faith. He says, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Now the word abide, that's the operative word. That means it's got to be, it's got to last. It's got to stay. It's got to be eternal. Just like you abiding in Christ, Christ abides in you. By the way, you've got to abide first before he abides in you. That means you've got to step out by faith so he can come to you. Or he reacts upon your faith. See, that's what you're supposed to do. And here you do the work, and it's only by Christ can he make it eternal. Or abiding works. Now listen, let's look at some passages of scripture to help you understand. Turn over to Daniel. Oh, you're going to the Old Testament? Yeah, we're going to the Old Testament. Turn over to the book of Daniel. Genesis, Exodus, or Daniel. Amen. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Some of you are like, really? Is Daniel's right after Exodus? Yeah, it's in the Pentateuch. <laughs> You're supposed to be laughing, brother. Some of you are going, what's the Pentateuch? <laughs> the first five books of Moses, how about that? That's why they call it Daniel. <laughs> sure help you out if you understand, uh, praise the Lord. Daniel, chapter 12, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Now listen. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Wait. Let's read that again. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. What does that turn into righteousness? That's works. What's that wisdom? That means they probably, and I'd, I'd, I'd probably say 100%, they used that wisdom that God gave them for the ministry or for, or for helping others. 
And what does he say you're going to be like? You're going to be like brightness. You're going to be like brightness of what? Of the firmaments. What is in the firmaments? Huh? The second heaven, but what is it? What is in it? Huh? What is in this? You got, you got the atmosphere, and then above that you got another heaven, because that's the first heaven, the second heaven, and then you got a third heaven. Third heaven is where the Lord lives. The sec what, what is in that area? Thank you, the sun, the moon, the stars. You're going to be bright like that. How about what he says in the second one? And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. That means, this, by the way, stars aren't going to be forever and ever because we know in Revelation they fall from the sky. But he says you'll be a star forever and ever. See, you know what people want to do in Hollywood and, and, in, uh, and in sports in America and around the world? They want to be the star. But that star eventually burns out. Where's Michael Jordan now? He was the greatest basketball player ever probably played in the NBA, ever. I mean, he was an amazing player. I've seen him play. Huh? He was an amazing player. But where is he now? Because he's a burnout star. But God says you can be a star that doesn't burn out. See, your works are supposed to abide forever and ever. You're doing eternal works when you work for the Lord. Works that will, will be in heaven. For eternity. Can you imagine God mentioning your works and saying, this is an eternal work? Hmm? He looks around and says, Joe, Mike led you to Christ, and you're here because he listened to what I told him to do, and his works are now eternal because of you. You're a representation of his works. Huh? Can you imagine that? And God gives you the glory you say, he's going to give you glory? He will give you glory, because the Bible says that God's the only one who can give man glory. And he'll give you glory for it. Because, is it because you are great? No, it's because you are a faithful servant. You're obedient to God. You'll shine. <laughs> You'll shine. You'll be bright. Look over at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Verse 45, I'm glad you asked about this passage of Scripture. Uh, some of you are saying, I did? Yeah, you did. <laughs> you just didn't know it yet. 24, verse 45, who, when is a faithful, who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. Doing what? That's right. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Now this rule, what happens is his master goes, leaves his, his household over the servant. The servant does right. He comes back, sees he did right, and guess what he does? He makes him a greater servant. A ruler. What's, it, what's that? That's a picture of God. He left, he put this book in our hands. We, he made us stewards and servants over this book. Uh, we're, we're supposed to be, uh, stewards are supposed to be faithful. That's the number one, number one condition of being a good, of a good steward is being faithful. So we're faithful with this book. We preach it right. We teach it right. We live by it right. And then what happens is he comes back and he finds us faithful. He makes you a ruler or much. He finds that you took care of everything right. Oh, are you going to make mistakes? You're going to make mistakes. I'm just telling you, you're going to make mistakes. You're a human being. Huh. You're human. You're going to make some mistakes. But here he talks about, he's a ruler over all his goods. I, I gave him a greater realm of, of ruling, a greater realm of authority. That's what that is. By the way, <laughs> that's what he says. He's going to say, you were, you were faithful over little. I'm going to make you rulers over much. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Say, it's right here, in um, I believe it's in Matthew also. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. Look at what he says. He says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You see that? Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee faithful over many things. No. I'll make you, uh, what? Ruler. Do you understand his position he went from? What was he when he was faithful over the few things that the master gave him? Servant. Now what has he made him? Made him a ruler. 
Does he make, make him less of a servant? No, not really. Good rulers are great servants. Hmm? But the thing is, is he gave him a higher position as a servant. Basically, he's saying this, what, he, what Christ said to the believers. He says, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Uh, so you, be, you go ahead and be the greatest servant. And he says, I'll make you the first, the ruler. I'll make you a ruler. You're not going to rule over Christ. You're not going to rule over God, the spirit of God. You're not going to be ruler of heaven. But he'll make you rulers over areas of God's realm, of his kingdom. See? And he'll, and he'll give you a reward that will abide forever. Hmm? Man, I don't, that's why I don't understand Christians don't want to do anything for God. Christians say, I'm just happy to be saved. That's it. I mean, you know how to tell whether you want to do something for God or not? When it's brought up to do some service, you find an excuse to get out of it. You, you I mean, and you may even think it's a vile excuse. A vile excuse. <laughs> a vile excuse. It is a vile excuse. <laughs> you might think it's an, a, a good excuse. <laughs> You might think it's okay. Huh? We used to have guys always, well, Rhonda was just talking about this the other day to me. We had, we had some ladies in our church, they call me up, it's going to be Wednesday night church or, or Sunday night church, they call me up and say, Preacher, there was 10 raindrops. It's going to rain. I can't come to church. I said, did you draw a circle and see if 12 drops drop in the circle? <laughs> That's the Arizona way to know it's going to be a rainstorm. <laughs> huh? And they said, no. And I said, so you're worshiping the rain god, huh? <laughs> you know what? They, next thing I know, they're pulling into the parking lot. <laughs> That's all I had to say to them. You know what they're doing? Making excuses why they couldn't come to the service and worship the Lord. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, you're worshiping the rain god. You, you make up excuses. You know what excuses are? Reasons stretched over a lie. So you make excuses why you can't serve God, why you can't soul win, why you can't hand out a track, why you can't uh, preach, why you can't sing, why you can't do whatever. Huh? What are you, crazy? You're, what are you saying to God? I don't want your rewards. Don't give me the rewards. Quit pushing your rewards on me. <laughs> huh? Don't make me a ruler. <laughs> and you might even think right now, well, I, would, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think I'd want that responsibility. You're not going to have that old flesh that's going to tell you that. See, what's going to happen is you're going to be in the, the, you're going to be truly perfect. And you're going to wish, when you get to heaven, if you haven't done what you should do here on earth to receive rewards, you're going to wish you had. You're going to say, man, I blew it. I, w I wanted to be a ruler. Yeah, now you want to be a ruler, but you didn't when you were on earth. I wanted to get rewards, but you didn't when you were on earth. I said, how do you know? Because look at what you do. If you don't do anything for God, you're going to get exactly that. If I tell my kids to clean their room, well, guess where I got this idea? Clean their room, they don't do it. They're not going to get treated. I'm not going to give them ice cream. I give out ice cream to everybody who does their room. And there's going to be someone sitting there, well, what about me? Sorry. You know, what do we do when the kids don't eat their food? You're not getting anything after dinner. Look at you don't eat your food, you're not getting popcorn, you're not getting ice cream, you're not getting some kind of treat. Everybody will get it that ate their food, but you won't. Well, that's not right. You're treating them wrong. That's not what God says. That comes straight from the Lord, out of his word. He's not giving rewards to everybody. Look at He's not giving trophies to everybody who participated. That's our nature today. That is, uh, that is what they do in America. Everybody gets a trophy because you're on the team. Well, you're all, every one of you is on the team of the Lord. Yeah. And if you do nothing, you're not getting a trophy. <laughs> we were crazy in America. Give rewards to people for doing nothing. Yeah. What are you doing? You're propagating. A, doing nothing's okay. <laughs> you know what I did when I, had, when I coached baseball? We got trophies for the guys who excelled, who, who were the stars of the team. Why? Because they put out effort. We had guys that were just dragging the team down. 
guys who were just there holding a position. I remember we had a guy who was third base. Ball come right at him. And I, I mean, if it wasn't right at him, he wasn't going to reach it. I mean, he wasn't going to go left or right to get the ball. It had to come right at him. So it would go right past him. I sit there pulling my hair out. How many times have I told you to move to the ball? Get to the ball! <laughs> it didn't come at me. I can't get to the ball. <laughs> I said, get off the field! <laughs> I said, did you do that? I did that many a times. I actually went out on the field, didn't call time. You know, you're supposed to call time. I just go out on the field. Get over here. Come on, you're coming with me. Huh? I wonder if God feels that way about us sometimes. He's not doing what I told you to do. Huh? Bible says that's, that uh, Israel wearied God. Huh? Kind of wonder if Christians don't weary God. God just wants to pull us off the field. I remember hearing when I was a young Christian, preachers would be preaching, talking about God shelving a believer because they just wouldn't do what God told them to do. It means he puts you on the shelf. Can't use you. You don't want to listen. Hey, you'll get in by fire, but that's it. All your works are going to be wood, hay, and stubble. They're going to burn up. What did he say over here? He says in verse 21 of chapter 25 of Matthew, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And he has a reason to be joyful. And what do you say in verse 22? He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Those two first are really good. Look at verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee, thee that thou was in a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. So, lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gather where I have not strawed. Have you noticed there's more verses about this man? Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which had ten talents. For every for unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall he take away even that which he hath, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now look at He's, all three of these are his servants, because it says so. But one guy took it and hid his talent in the earth. What is the earth? It says the world. He lived in the world, didn't want to do anything for God. He has hid the fact that he was a believer. He hid the fact that he had the talent. Huh? Did his own thing. Did what he wanted to do instead of what the master wanted to do. When the master come back, he said, you could have put it in a bank and got usury. That means interest. Yeah, but you wouldn't even do that. The simplest thing. What's the simplest thing? Pray. Why don't you just pray? Hmm? Why don't you just hand out a track? You don't even have to talk to anybody. Just hand them a track. You see how easy God's trying to give us a, a reward? You give them. Look at it. Just put it in the bank. Lay up your treasures in heaven. Why? So your heart will be there. Well, he had his buried in the world. Huh? So God took it away from him. He gave it to the ones that had. Hmm? It came to naught for that man. Now you have a choice, Christian. You want to be one that comes to no reward or one that gets a reward. See, we know this about with God. God says there are going to be some that aren't going to get rewards, but yet they're going to get into heaven. Because all their works are going to be wood, hay, and stubble. And then there's others that are going to be faithful servant. Well done, that good and faithful servant. And he's going to let them enter into the joy of the Lord. Make them rulers over much. It's your choice. You could, you, but you're going to make the choice here. You're not going to make the choice afterwards. Just like getting saved. You can't get saved afterwards. You've got to get saved in this life. And if you want to get rewards from the Lord, you're going to have to do it in this life to lay up treasures in heaven. You can't wait till you get before the Lord and then say, God, let me do something for you. Yeah, That'd be like saying to the, the rich man in hell, saying, send Lazarus to my brothers so they won't come to this place where I'm at. It's too late, rich man. 
Mm -hmm. See, we think we got an easy road, Christian. But really, we got to take really in account what we're going to do for the Lord in this life for the effects of our eternal life. Because what we do here is going to affect us for eternity. Can you imagine if you never get a reward in heaven and you've got to live with that for eternity? Oh, you'll be glad you're in heaven. But see, you're not going to be looking around. Oh, I remember, I remember you. You're not going to say that. You're going to look around and say, I don't remember anybody here. In fact, you may get the opportunity to go to the great white throne judgment. Not to be judged, just to watch those that you neglected telling the gospel to get cast into hell. How about that? Yeah. Hmm? So that you could say, oh me. What was I thinking? Amen. And I didn't give the gospel to people that needed it. Hmm. Turn over to 1 Corinthians. Back to our chapter 3. Verse 8 says, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. It's not according to someone else's labor. It's according to your labor. You're getting rewarded according to your labor. Huh? So what are you doing? Look at labor. What is labor? Can you imagine? Look, we were in Honduras. We're building a bridge for a missionary across this river. It's a raging river. As the, pre as the missionary said, he says, in the, in the summer... It's just a babbling brook, but in the winter, it's a raging river. Uh, it's dangerous, and it was 15 foot high, come by, come by like, a, like a, I mean, full force. It was taking cars down the river and cattle down the river. I mean, every, anything that got into that river, it couldn't withstand the, the force of the river. So they had to block off the river, and we, and we dug holes so we can pour the footers and pillars and stuff for this bridge. The fill, at the bottom of the pillars were 14 foot by 20 foot of concrete poured, raised it up, and they, they diverted the river so that we could do this work. But we had a guy that came with us named Kevin, and uh, he came with us, and he decided he was going to just rest under a tree and eat and, and watch us work for three weeks plus, <laughs> 23 days to be exact. <laughs> and he was just going to lay back. So the missionary comes to me, the first day, and says, this guy's useless. He says, this guy needs to get off the field. He says, you send him back to your guys' room. We were living in a little hut in the middle of the jungle and uh, with scorpions, or not scorpions, with uh, tarantulas. I mean, we're talking tarantulas, hundreds of them on the walls and stuff. It's like, like, if you have a problem with acrophobia, you're in trouble. <laughs> Seriously. And you, you, you brush everything out, your sleeping bags, your blankets, your shoes, your socks, everything. You wanted to make sure there was none of those guys in there. And uh, so what ended up happening was is uh, he goes back to the, his, the room. That was like about 8 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock at night. We're done. I go back to the room. He's in there laying on his bed, snacking, reading, thinking he's just that's how he's going to live for the next three weeks. And I drug him out of bed. I ripped his shirt off, <laughs> and, I, and I put the whooping on him, and I said, you ain't doing it this way. I said, you will labor. Amen. We brought you here to labor, not to, to, this is not a vacation for you. Huh? And he started saying, well, I'll turn you into authorities. I said, there's no authorities here. This is not America. This is not the Western culture. We're talking like these people don't give a rip if I bury you in the jungle. <laughs> They're not going to come looking for you. And that's what I told him. And then he, started, he cried like a baby. I'm not joking. He cried like a baby. <laughs> and that's when he said to Daryl, Daryl, help me. Daryl says, I've already been through this. I'm not helping you at all. <laughs> and Daryl had been through that. I drug him out of the bed. I said, man, you get out of this bed. <laughs> huh? I can't, can't stand men that just don't do right. I couldn't stand it. So I went down to the missionary, and I said, he, his house was probably, I don't know, 40 feet away from our little hut that we were in. So I went down there. I figured he heard the screaming and everything. And, 
And uh, I went down there and said, I'm really sorry for what had happened. Now, we only knew this missionary one day. <laughs> you know, he didn't know us from nobody. So I said, I'm really sorry about this. He goes, I don't know what you're talking about. Amen. Know what he's saying? He needed that. It was good for him because he needed to learn to labor. You know, that guy was good as gold the next three weeks. <laughs> I mean, he did exactly what I told him to do. Amen. He learned to labor. That's what God puts us through sometimes. He puts a whooping on us, chastens us until we learn to labor. Huh? He said, I, look, it, I got you here. You, this isn't for you to be a couch potato Christian. This isn't just for you to relax. I didn't save you just to sit around. Amen. I saved you so you could be a laborer for the cause of Christ. Amen. Do something for him. And don't hide the fact you're a believer. Amen. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Amen. You know what? How are you going to get rewards if you don't labor? You know one of the hardest things for Christians to do in labor? Anybody know? Anybody? Well, rejoicing. No, there's something harder than that. What's that? Obey. What else? He's being faithful. What else? Huh? Witnessing. What else? Praying. Who said that? You said that? Praying. What is the, the weakest part of most Christians' lives? It's hard to get down on your knees for 15 minutes, half hour, an hour, two hours, three hours. I know a preacher who prays for seven hours straight. Then you want to know what, how he got there? Labored. It's hard to stay down. We're, we're a fast-paced society. We've got to be up doing something. All of a sudden, things start going through our mind, what I could be doing instead of here praying. Right. Hmm? We go over the lips, through the gums, look out, tell me, here it comes. Okay, I'm done praying. Let's go. Never even talked to God. We think we did. We didn't, we didn't talk to God. I still remember what Tom Williams said. He, he'd get down on his face and start praying. He didn't say any words. He just started groaning. Basically, God, where are you? I want to talk to you. I want to know your presence before I say anything. You know what Christians do? Lord, thank you for the day. Lord, I need this and I need that. And here's my Christmas list. Amen. No labor in it. Huh? What did the woman say to the unjust judge? She kept going back to him. Help me! Help me! Help me! He says, I'm getting weary of this woman. I'm going to help her. <laughs> you want to know what she was doing? She was knocking on his door all the time. Finally, he said, okay, I'll help you. You ever have a kid do that? Kept coming back with the same thing over and over and over. And finally, you just say, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> That's from Jersey. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> huh? Amen. We've got to be laborers. Well, labor in prayer. I used to say, in the, the old preachers used to say, we prayed through. I mean, you stayed on your knees till God showed up. You know what you do in a revival? You stay on your knees till God shows up. You know what you do when you come, come for the, forward to the invitation? You stay on your knees till God shows up. You want to know why we had that, that uh, Brother Combs came and preached? Preached 45 minutes, had a four and a half hour uh, invitation because people stayed until the Lord showed up. And he showed up. Why do you think those kids were next door when some kids came to church here and were lost and the kids knew it? Why do you think the Holy Ghost moved on them? Little kids! And the, the adults are sitting in here. This is early in our ministry here. And, and the, they came in and they're weeping and crying. And they said, the Holy Ghost moved over there. And I mean, the adults were telling them that we're over there, said that the Holy Ghost was moving on them. And they came over here and the adults in our church were like, wow, what is this? I'm not joking. What's this? How come they're like this? Because you've never seen it, that's why. Because you never labored to receive it. Labored till the Holy Ghost showed up. Hmm? Look at Getting God involved in the service. Getting God involved in your life. Getting God involved in revival. Getting God involved in the youth rally and Western Roundup. Instead, what we do is we just play the game. We just go through the motions. There's no labor in going through the motions. 
Hmm? We had people in our church here who were very talented, and they just went through the motions. Never labored. Never tried to get better because they believed they were good enough. No labor in that. Look, God give you a talent. All you're saying is, well, I'll just use it for, you know, I'll just, I'll just bury it in the earth. That's what I'll do. I'll just, you know, just keep it the way it is. What did those other guys do? One had five talents. He had ten talents when he was done. That means it increased. The one guy had two talents. He had four talents when he was done. That was an increase. This guy had one talent. He just kept it one talent. <laughs> no labor in any of that. You get better. When a preacher says, I preached the same way I did 40 years ago, that's too bad. You should be preaching better. Amen. God should be giving you wisdom. You should see things different. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We need a labor. I think we're going to be shocked how many people are going to just get in by fire. Yeah. And we're going to think, well, he had a huge empire. Hmm. My preacher used to say, my mom's going to get greater rewards than I am. Remember that? And he had a big ministry. And my mom's going to get greater rewards. Because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Hmm? She labored to get me where I'm at. Hmm? I was telling you. What about you? Hmm. What about me? What about us? What about Lookout Mountain Baptist Church? What about the churches in Phoenix and the churches in Arizona and the churches in America? Churches around the world. And God still gets the short end of the stick that we don't really labor. We just, we're just kind of coasting till he comes again. Our Heavenly Father, we just ask you to help us. We sure do need wisdom in all this. Help us to be the laborers you want us to be. I remember preachers always saying when I was a young Christian, if you're not better next year than you are this year, then you're backslidden. That means you're, you haven't labored. If you haven't increased, you just got your talent buried in the earth. and Really, your two talents should be four talents next year. And the next year after that should be eight talents and so on. Become better Christians, better servants, better laborers. When we got saved, we got the Spirit of God. And now how does the Spirit speak to us today, years later? Is it better than it was then? Or is it less... Help us, Lord. The Bible says, if you think you and take heed lest you fall. If you're sitting there right now saying, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good Christian, better watch out. You better watch out. I'll give you something you want to pray about.